Welcome into Rick Renner, Texas High School Hysteria. Make sure you tune in to our weekly show on YouTube, Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and Odyssey, or any of your favorite streaming platforms. Subscribe now and never miss an episode. Joining me now, the king of the east side of the greater Houston area, a man who absolutely needs no introduction. He bleeds Galena Park North Shore Mustangs through and through. I'm talking about a former great quarterback there, a former longtime assistant, and now first-year head coach, the one and only Willie Gaston. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. I'm even better after the introduction. Wow. <laughs> I could have gone on and on. I mean, you've got a lot of rings and stuff, and you're working on that first ring as head coach. Uh, I, I don't think anybody has embraced the grind as much as you. Why do you enjoy that so much? I think that's the only way I've learned how to do it. I need Coach K and Coach Haymon coming up as a coach. It's just, you know, hard work truly plays off, and, you know, that's things we preach to our kids. So it's it's only the way I know how to do things. And, and, and I want to definitely make sure I'm doing it and my players see me doing it and the coaches see we're doing it. And that's what we all do, Ryan. Everybody truly embraces the grind and how, how much attention to detail when it comes to things. So that's the way we was taught, and that's the way we're going to keep it rolling. You have been such a big part of the state championship culture there. How do you get the kids to believe what you believe? I think it's it's all about the buy-in from the kids and, and making sure we're preaching the same message. You know, we truly don't go around here talking about, hey, we got to win a state championship. Our, our message is and our goal is just to get better. And I think the kids is buying into that, the coaches buy into it, you know, especially when we hire new coaches when they come in. We we tell those guys right off the bat, we don't go around here talking about we're trying to win state championships. We want to make sure we're, we're preaching the message of getting better each day. It's been such a smooth transition from the legendary John K to you as head coach. How has that been so seamless? How have you been able to do that? What I think is, you know, Coach K has prepared me well. And uh, for this this moment, you know, we didn't think that moment would be here in North Shore, but he was preparing me for a moment to be somewhere as a head coach. And, you know, when Coach K left, it definitely, you know, shot the world, shot us as well. But, you know, it's, you, you, like I said, I've been underneath Coach K. I've been under Coach Amon, who first hired me here back in North Shore. And it's, it's with us. And they broke the way trying to fix it. So, what, you know, being here and the kids know me, being from the community, it's just been a smooth transition. He talks about how he's so darn proud of you and what you've become as a man uh, away from, you know, coaching and all that stuff. How much has he meant to you personally? Well, you know, he's watched me growing up from a little kid and, you know, into a grown man with a wife and kids and family. And, uh, you know, you, you take the football side out, out of everything. And, you know, we're all human beings and we all got a personal life. And, you know, we get the chance to hang out. And I've been over at his house. He's been over at my house. My kids love him to death. My wife loves him to death. So everybody in the Gaston household was sad at the point when they found out he was leaving. I don't know if they was too much happy for me getting the job as much as it's sad it was for watching, knowing that he wasn't going to be around him. <laughs> Very funny. You know, I, I I look at him and, and he's just a guy that he has really been with you every step of the way, right? I mean, you probably feel like he's still in your ear yelling at you. I mean, it goes back to when you were a young football player coming up in the Galena Park North Shore yeah. program. Relationship dates back to 1996 at Cunningham Middle School and he was a first year head coach and I was a first year guy, you know, being able to start middle school football in seventh grade and it's just been there ever since, you know, and I tell people, you know, I was seventh grade football coach. He, he was, I mean, seventh grade football player, and he was a seventh grade coach. And then next thing I know, go to eighth grade, well, he gets moved up to the coach to eighth grade team. You know, I go to ninth grade, he gets moved up to be a ninth grade coach. I just tell him I can't shake you, man. I know you we like each other, but dang. <laughs> <laughs> but watching him just, you know, even, you know, I'm so proud of who he is. And, I, and watching him growing from this young coach into a, being the same person he was, that he was a high, highly disciplinary type of coach as a seventh grader. You could see that he was going to be special. And he, and his, like, you know, we're talking about the grind and his buy into being on this east side of the community. You know, he might be from Detroit, but he was east side race. So it's, it's just watching his growth and where he's at and the success he's had as a head coach. And now the success he will have in college is, you know, I'm happy for him just as much as he's happy for me. What are the biggest lessons you have learned from him as a coach? 
I, I think it's really about just truly being fair and, and uh, making sure when you, you're fair and you're doing the discipline and you and you got standards, you, you're sticking by them and, and you you know and you believe in what you're what you're trying to preach. And I uh, I learned that from him. He, everybody was treated the same way here, and that's what it's going to continue to be. We're going to make sure I treat kids the right way, and, and I'm holding them up to high demand as well. So and with high expectations of what we need to do in North Shore program, making sure they understand. We have done it way before you was coaching, playing here. We're going to be doing it way after you guys leave here. You know, you were a guy that was very instrumental in probably one of the most magical moments in Texas state history, the Hail Mary state championship back in 2018. Let's go through the dynamics of that because it was really interesting. I know John Kay talks about that story about how the kids were in the huddle. It was before the play. And you guys were thinking about going with the Boise play, which is the Boise State play where you kind of pitch the ball back and and kind of pray and hope that it's going to happen. And he could see it in the kids' eyes that it wasn't going to work. You jumped in there and said, Hail Mary, which is something that you guys have always practiced. Take me through that huddle and the play from your perspective and how you guys made history. You know, we, you know when this is when there's such an interesting dynamic on things when uh, – just understanding and believing in your kids. You know, I was saying Boise at first, too, and I was like, and I'm asking the coach, what we think about Boise because we're practice both. And Coach K is like, oh, the kids are kind of looking like they don't want Boise and stuff like that. And, you know, some great players, and you trust your players. And they was just like, hey, Hail Mary. And I was like, forget it, let's go, Hail Mary. And and the kids went out there and executed, and everybody did it exactly how we were practicing all the time. And we're still doing it the same way. And, you know, and the good thing is now you actually got tape to show people why we do it that way. So these young kids get to see it. And I, I love history. And I'm one of those guys. So I'll say, hey, it's time for a history lesson. Now I'll go back and show old tape with these guys on things and why we do things. And they, you can hear all the kids laughing like, oh, one of those guys in history lesson. Let's see who we're watching now. So, but I think it was just, you know, a big moment for the school. Absolutely. Just some big time players out there on both sides of the ball. And it was just probably a, a, a definitely one of the best fun games I've ever been a part of. Why do you think it worked? Because, you know, you think about that secondary for Duncanville, and really people don't realize that the guy that actually caught the ball was not the one that was designed to catch the ball. Well, I think everybody kind of, you know, went to that point. And I think as coaches, you know, when you're preaching Hail Mary, it's it's going to be a lot of luck involved. Let's, it's not like a, a play where, hey, you better have some luck on your side. But, you know, the kids understand it like we got to hot point the ball. And if we don't get the ball, we're trying to tip it. Somebody's got to come down with it. I think if somebody in the NFL just caught one this past weekend. So it's just one of those things where you want to make sure we're high pointing the ball. Um, really, Shadrach Banks was right there, and he always says this, oh, I was going to catch it if AJ didn't catch it. And you can see he's in a great spot to catch this ball. So, I, you know, but to to their credit, AJ did a great job going to go high point this ball. And and Duncanville, you know, I, I, I hate to be on the other side of it of that and you know send to lose that way yeah aj carter boy what an unbelievable story he was to a kid that went through so much sometimes you think about divine intervention in a play like that 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 really kind of changed the course of your program and got you on this incredible run of state championships yes sir it did most definitely did you know i think like you say with any of these runs and stuff like that you gotta have a little luck on your side and you know have some good karma coming your way how crazy is it though when you when you think back and and now we're approaching kind of almost a decade now you know, well it was back in 2018 but looking back and what a crazy way to win a state championship game in the largest classification in Texas. No, I think everybody knows that who's at that game definitely got their money's worth. I think like I said, you, you, you're playing a team like Duncanville who's so well coached and got so much talent. You know, most people just talk about the talent, but they're a really well coached team. Uh, coach does a great job over there coaching them up, and uh, they got too many coaches. I don't really know a lot of those guys personally, but I have talked to a couple of them, but they do a great job with their scheme and everything they do. And I know you're a guy that likes to root, even though it, it was against you guys for a guy like Reginald Samples, who's been such a legend, to finally get that first state championship. You know, you know, it's it's a bittersweet moment because he he's has me so much, especially to you know the minorities in this state. As a coach of what his his track record, his success, and everything he's done, you know, in, in a way you're kind of happy for the guy, but in a way you still like, man, as a competitor, you know, I I, I want to win them all. You know, you get up, you get to that opportunity, that's what you want to do. But 
it's, it was such a great moment for him. You know, I think everybody in that Dallas area was excited for him. It's a lot of coaches that, you know, is on his back and he's put out there from Coach Todd, who's at Sox. All those guys does such a tremendous job. I, I know they was happy for him, and I saw the excitement for him, and it, it was well-deserved. You ever get sick of playing Duncanville in state title games? <laughs> I don't get sick of playing whoever we got to play in the state title. If we're in the state title game, I don't care who it is. So, uh, you know, I don't know if most people probably be upset about the matchup sometimes, but, hey, at the end of the day, I, when you get to that point, because it's such a hard thing to do, I think, you know, most people get confused about – send the same teams over and over with, but they don't understand that truly how hard it is to get to that to that level. And and all the teams that's been there before understand that it's it's been teams that have been there one time and never made it back. It's been teams that made it there multiple times. And I tell you each time it, it's just as hard as the first time. Now Coach K has really kind of outdone himself every year when he would win those state titles. The rings kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The last one almost looked like a wedding cake. When you get your first state championship ring as head coach, uh, are you going to make it like a hubcap? Because you got to outdo what he did before. I'll tell you, these rings are getting ridiculous at all levels when you start seeing them. It's to the point where I, I, a part of me want to just go back to being old school and just give me a little small ring, something I can actually wear. I don't want none of them, believe it or not, because they're not wearable. <laughs> But, <laughs> I know Coach K kind of has an extension on his house just yeah. to kind of house those rings and have them spinning around with the spotlight on them. Thinking about you can go back to the early 80s when you had the long rings they used to wear, right? And maybe you get you something like that. I don't know. But at the end of the day, you're, you're excited for the kids to really see them. And we take, you know, we take pride in letting the kids have some, let's say, in, uh, designing them and coaches have input. So we try to make it a whole family ordeal because everybody's contributing to it. And it's truly a brotherhood with these kids. That's why we're a brotherhood across our shirts now. So you want everybody to have a little, you know, say in it and have fun with it. You know, back in your playing days, you were one of the most electric quarterbacks in this state. Uh, you know, I think back to that unbelievable playoff game you had and that incredible shootout with Vince Young and the Madison Marlins. They were able to knock you guys out of the playoffs 61 to 58, but you were better than Vince Young that day, right? You were better than him. I don't know. Vince Young was pretty special that day as well. We couldn't tackle him. I can remember we're watching this six foot five guy run down the sidelines and saying, man, okay, yeah, that's what they look like at the next level. But, uh, it was one of those days. I think we truly outperformed them as an offense, and uh, but they just, you know, had the opportunity to have the ball last, and we, you know, had a drop pass, which probably would have helped us win the game. But it's it was such a fun game, and I hear people still to this day just tell me about, man, I was at that game, one of the best high school games I've been to, and I was so excited to be a part of a game like that because that truly was like one of the first times where you saw, walked out and just seen a game with 30 some thousand people in it and it was just bananas and it was like the third round of the playoffs yeah uh, i mean we see those crowds of 45,000 50,000 now and it's no big deal but you know that was at the turn of the millennium the yeah. electricity of that it was like you were playing in the largest nfl stadium and I think that's truly, like I tell a lot of people, I think that's truly was like that tipping point of where high school football really starts taking off when it came to these crowd sizes. We, you know, you didn't have those crowd sizes like that back when we were playing. And I said it's like I'm dating myself, but, you know, <laughs> but it's just truly what it really was. Now it's nothing to have 30, 40,000 people at a, in, a, in, a, in the game for a playoff, second round, first round, whatever, third round, fourth round, whatever it may be. So it's just – show how much this game has grown to a lot of people in the state of Texas from just loving high school football. It's still one of the most purest things now still we have, especially with the college, with all the stuff that's going on in college with the transport portal and NIL. It's the most purest form right now we have of kids truly playing football because they love the community. They love being a part of it. And, and it ain't about making money right now. It's still about playing it right here and we're doing it the right way in the state of Texas. Now, do your kids know what a big deal you were as a player? I, I think some of them think they know. Uh, you know, they they always give they give me a hard time out here because I tell them every time I say, "Hey, you know, special messing with Bailey." Like, oh, I, if I played in this offense growing up in high school, I I would be unstoppable. I'm <laughs> for about three hundred, and I'm throwing for two hundred something plus. I said, it ain't no doubt in my mind. You can't tell me otherwise. I said. If I can rush with down there 200 yards underneath the center running just triple option, mean, well, not even triple option, just a regular old option, I can only imagine what I can do with zone read and some of the key run games now you can do out of the gun. I said we was way back in the day, old school, 12 personnel, you know, 21 personnel, pounding the ball down your throat. I said 
little play action here. I said, you guys have now we got the RPO game and all that stuff. I said, I would kill it. I, said, <laughs> I always love messing with my guys. And then, and I said, then I'll line over a DB and, and lock you up right now to some of our best receivers. So I said, I can do both of them. You just let me know which one y'all want me to do. <laughs> yeah. And all the protections that the quarterbacks have. I mean, oh, back when you played, you're just trying to survive the game and actually walk can, after it, you know? I can remember just handing off the ball, faking boots, just getting smoked right in the face. And it was it's just that happened over and over again. <laughs> That's beautiful. Well, I know you've always said, you know, you got to have a quarterback to have a chance. And you got a great one in Caleb Bailey. This is a guy, KB the magician, man, coming back from that ACL injury. How impressed have you been with him? It has and how he's been able to come back stronger and better than ever. I, I think the growth of his football IQ has just really picked up a lot. Uh, he's still not no finished product by any means, but from watching him as a freshman, having him as a freshman, and then he got off to a great start as a sophomore and to lose him. And the most thing I've been impressed with him is that, you know, most kids, when you get that injury, it's so hard for them to overcome and understand the importance of doing the rehab and doing all this stuff to get themselves ready to play. But not only did he take that rehab series and then making sure he's out there still not, you know, losing the football knowledge, just in the film and watching film, helping David Amador out, you know, just letting them know, hey, giving them little tips in here on how you got to do things when it comes to motion to make sure we, we understand that. So, you know, I look at you and you're one of those unique athletes that you've been able to play uh, the majority of your career in the same city. And you got to do that with the Cougars at the University of Houston. Uh, what are your thoughts about the Cougs uh, going to the Big 12 and being in a power conference? You know, I think it's long overdue. You know, uh, they should have never got left out in the beginning. But, you know, politics and money runs a lot of things. And I'm happy for uh, U of age. And uh, I'm excited to be a part of the family. It's, it's it's a school university I love. It's a school university. The reason why I'm sitting here right now as a head coach, they gave me my college degree and 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 took care of me and, and grew me and shaped me and formed me to a great young man that I am now still. But it's just one of those things I'm happy for the university. I got a chance to go out there and watch and play against Rice and stuff like that. So it's it's been exciting. You know, in my mind, I always thought of you as an NFL guy. I know you got a little shot, but I didn't think you got a fair shot. Ever in your wildest dreams, though, did you think you'd end up as a coach in all these years? Because you probably thought of yourself as an NFL guy, right? Yeah, and, you know, like I said, I got a little chance to play. I didn't stick very long. That's why I tell these kids it's a hard lead to stick in. It's a bunch of good athletes. If you look at anybody out on that roster, just know they can go. Um, but, you know, I definitely didn't see myself coaching at all. Uh, again, I, I got to give all that credit to Coach Amon, who kind of forced me <laughs> at the same time. I was like, no, you're taking the job. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it was one of those things. I was definitely heading to uh, a career in sales and uh, to work at Ferguson Pumper Supply to be part of the sales team. I got a good buddy that still worked there to the day. We we're going to start at the same time. And and Coach Amon was like, nah, I think you need to come over and coach. We, we need you. And I'm like, ah, I don't know if I really want to coach. And so I give all the credit to Coach Amon basically forcing me to come be a part of this. And I, that was back in 2008. And I haven't looked back since. It is interesting that there have been so many former Galena Park North Shore players that have ended up as coaches there. It's kind of unique around the state. You see it a little bit here and there, but probably more so at this school than any other school. Why do you think that is? I think, you know, I don't know if it's just by coincidence or, you know, I think it's are some guys that you can see. And we got a lot of players that are so smart and you can see that they're going to go to school and do great things. And they all ain't going to play in the NFL, but they're going to better go get a degree and I, the ones I've seen have already expressed interest of that's what they wanted to do. When they was leaving, oh, I want to be a coach, you know, and those guys are doing a phenomenal job. We got guys at the college level. We got guys at the NFL level. And I've been coached here, and it's just, it's amazing for me to see them guys coaching out there and and continue to grow just as Glenn Park ISD network of coaches, you know. And, and, I, and our district does such a good job of bringing – former players, not just coaches, but teachers and all that stuff back to the district. And because it is, like I said, people that's been through here and understands the same thing our kids are going through is the, the guys you want to run our kids and who's going to help those kids develop and become better human beings. How rewarding has it been for you to be a coach and impact these kids' lives? Oh, it's, 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 it's a feeling that you, I love uh, just to be able to help them. And again, I grew up in this neighborhood 
And, you know, I know how tough things can get uh, coming from a single family home, staying with my dad, me and my brother, understanding like, hey, just because you're in this, you know, you search things this way right now, it's a, it's a chance where you can, you know, make life a little bit different, just, you know, work hard, do the right things and good things happen. I know when you took over this coaching job, uh, you said, hey, there's not much to change. <laughs> I mean, obviously, being in all these state title games and winning all these rings. Um, but if you could say there was one stamp that that is kind of your stamp on this program, what would it be? Well, you know, the difference between me and Kay I, I, and stuff, I, I, I'm going I'm to show a lot more emotional energy and stuff like that. Kay was so calm, cool, and collected on the sideline. I, I show a little bit more excitement. I, you know, so I think our kids kind of feed off that a little bit to know that, hey, it's okay to get a little excited. I want them to play with a little emotion and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, we got to better harness that energy as well, make sure we ain't playing emotional, you know. So that's – and that goes for me as well. I want I don't want these kids to see me out of character on things like that when it comes to talking to officials and all that stuff. I want to be – Genuine excited, making sure I got the best interest for our kids and I'm doing the best job I can do. All right, let's put you in the Ford F-150 driver's seat. If you could name the top five players, and you've had so many of them, the top five players that you have coached at Galena Park North Shore, who would they be? I ain't putting in no order. <laughs> so I definitely have to go Sharad Banks, Demetrius Davis, David Amador, and then I'm going to have to show some love because you can't do stuff without the old lineman. Damian George and Jaden. Uh, That's a pretty darn good list there. Jayden, those guys right there. Uh, just watching those guys right there. And that's just, you know, you got two old linemen that were powerful guys and that was just really, truly different makers out there. And then the, with the skill, it's just, you know, and it, it's so many people like uh, Zach Evans, like, uh, you know, it's so many kids that have been so good to this program and contributors, but it's just like impact players, like touch what David done. It's just unbelievable. And then, you, you know, you get a shower at Banks, it's like, well, he's just a phenomenal player. He's having a great career over there right now at TCU. He's the kickoff returner and he plays linebacker it shows you how athletic they know how athletic he is so it's just you know and Demetrius Davis is hands down and then you know one day it's gonna be a Caleb Bailey so it's so it's, it's just it's so many good athletes to come through I hate to leave people out but then they if you tell me my five right now I gotta go Sharon Banks Demetrius Davis David Almondor Jaden Roberts and Damon George and you know what I like a lot about those that list you gave? Uh, so many of them played so young in their careers. You know, you think about Demetrius Davis, that kid was doing it as a freshman. You know, I mean, he's winning a state championship as a young little kid out there, uh, you know, just ice in his veins. Yeah, especially, you know, he had a freshman year we saw the special. I, I can remember like yesterday we were playing Katie right there around four that they got after our but Coach Joseph does. He's the godfather of Houston. Let's, you know, he does such a great job. So Coach Joseph them got after us, and I can remember telling those guys, "Hey, man, we're gonna we're gonna be all right." And then we, I can remember uh, where real line happened, where alignment happened that we was gonna play them. So I told him, "Hey, I guarantee you, we're gonna beat them. We're gonna beat them this year. We're gonna be ready to go." You guys are playing in the big stage and reliant. And we, we came out that year as a sophomore year, and he was clicking. I was like, oh, we're, this is this is going to be trouble for a lot of people. It's such a hotbed for recruiting uh, your school. I mean, the college recruiters, they love coming in and getting your kids. You know, you talked about Banks earlier who will play four or five different positions. They'll do anything to help a team. And, and that, that really is the psychology, I feel, uh, about a lot of your players. But when you have so much attention from the recruiters, how are you able to kind of weigh that and keep the kids focused at the task at hand? At the end of the day, I think they all got to know you're not playing for those universities. You're playing for North Shore. You're playing for your community. And I think right now I wouldn't go to none of these universities and go to their practices and try to distract any of their players. I think the uh, the recruiters does such a great job when they come here. They sit off to the side they're, and they're just truly spectating. And, they, and it's time where, you know, when they're able to say hello to a kid, we'll, we'll let them. But, you know, at the end of the day, when it's time for us to go to practice, it's time for us to go to practice. I'm never going to go to a college practice and – talk to kids and distract kids. I'm there to observe and watch, you know, even if our kids are practicing at these schools, 
when it's time to say hello to them, I'm going to say hello to them just out of respect and courtesy. But I think our kids understand at the end of the day, we got a job to do. And if you want to go to places like that, they want to make sure you know, they're working out anyway. So they don't want to take time for you to, to be over there to chopping it up with them and having a good time. They want to make sure you're out there working because they want to see you work as well. Yeah, I look at all the stars, five stars, four stars. I mean, it's like the Milky Way every time they come out there to watch the practices. Uh, Devin Sanchez is one that really jumps out at you. He's the number one junior in the state uh, at cornerback. He can pretty much go to any school. Everybody's looking at him. What makes him so special? Uh, Devin, really, he's long, rangy. You know, he's a great athlete. Uh, Devin's really just continued to – you know, he's such a coachable kid. Like, hey, he'll sit there and we'll talk about things. He know, And I, he knows I played at the, the, that spot, that position. So he asked me questions, and I give him my little tidbits here and there. I try not to step on his coach's toes because as coaches, that's what he's paid to do. But he's he wants to learn. He's eager to learn. His football IQ is actually pretty dang savvy. Uh, so when you've got a kid like that that's willing to learn and want to learn, he's going to push himself to be a pretty good special player. In recent years, we've noticed that the best individual talent in the state of Texas has come out of the greater Houston area, but the Dallas-Fort Worth area has been the one that's had the better teams that have won more state championships in the major classifications. You guys have been the ones that have broken through all that. Does Houston take that a little personal, you know, in those battles come state championship time? I really don't think I, – I never – like, you know, we had two Dallas schools when, you know, my thing is I'm not taking it personal because I'm so much focused on by, hey, what do we got to do to, you know, to, to finish those type of games. Uh, I don't think uh, – I never s sat around and talked about, man, Dallas swept us. You know, I, that's just not – that's not me. That's not in my character. I, you know, again, more power to those guys. My job is to focus on what North Shore has to do to continue to win and have success. Are you living the dream right now? You know, putting that Galena Park I, North. I, I truly am. I truly am. Uh, like I said, I, I knew I could be a head coach, and then I have had opportunities to be head coaches other places. But you know, it's nowhere special where you want to be at a place like Galena Park ISD, working at North Shore High School, school I went to, school I actually, you know, like I tell our kids, I got one thing in common with all you guys for sure. We both wore the horses on our helmets, so it's 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 no, you know, it's so surreal of a moment. Um. Uh, I'm excited to come to work. You know what I'm saying? They say you don't really work if you enjoy what you're doing. So I definitely enjoy what I'm doing, and I'm, I'm glad I'm here. Willie G, you've always been one of my favorites. You're a Texas treasure. Continued success. Thanks so much for doing this. Man, continued success to you. you like I said, you, you're you a Texas legend as well. And ah! So I can remember watching you. Uh, you know, can't wait to get home to watch the highlights, you know, back. So I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm thank you for this opportunity to let me be on your platform. And none but the best success to you as well, Reed. Thank you, buddy. Great job, man. Awesome job. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, no problem, man. I'm, I enjoyed it. Thanks for checking out Rick Renner, Texas High School Hysteria. Make sure you subscribe and never miss an episode. You can catch us on YouTube, Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and Odyssey or any of your favorite streaming platforms. Tune in and we will see you soon.